Hi, my name is Bobby Morgan, and I have the privilege of serving here at FOP. At FOP, our vision is to reach the hurting, repair the broken, restore the fallen, and rejoice in the process. We just want to say thank you so much for tuning in from wherever you're watching from. If you haven't already, make sure to like and subscribe. We believe today God has a word for you. So let's jump into the message. Good morning. I don't know about you, but I used to be in that dead place. How about you? Huh? As I was listening to those words, I was thinking, I used to be there. I used to be a dead person. I used to be a dead person walking in dead, in dead places. And Christ came into my life, and I went from death into life. Amen? We have the best message in the world to share. I want to share something with, by the way, my, I'm Tim. If you've, if you've, if you don't know who I am, my name's Tim and, and uh, my wife and, and my wife and I, Sherry, have been coming here for a long time and, and uh, so sit, sit and be, be comfortable. The Lord woke me up at uh, between 4 and 4.30 this morning. And he asked me to start praying. And he asked me to start praying for you. So I was praying this morning and I was just, Lord, every person that's coming to this, this service this morning, God, that you would break up the hard ground, the fallow ground, that you break that up. Now, you might be looking at me and going, Tim, hey, wait a minute, wait a minute. I've been a Christian a long time, you know. I'm, I'm walking with the Lord. What are you talking about hard ground? You know, we usually talk about hard ground when we're talking about people that aren't saved. But let me share something with you. I've still got hard ground. Okay? The only person that didn't have hard ground is Jesus Christ himself. Amen? We all have little things that we're holding back. We all have parts of our lives that we have not released to God yet, haven't we? By the way, you're a much nicer looking group that I can see out there that I normally talk to. You know, I'm usually on Thursday nights talking to a bunch of old ugly men all dressed the same. I say to the, it's so funny because I'll have them, you know, we'll have the church service. And, of course, the guards, they don't really care. They come in and bring in new prisoners right in the middle of the service, and they come lining up, you know. And it's amazing. Everybody that's sitting there looking at me, all of a sudden, all their heads turn. And they're looking at all the new people that are coming into the, into the cell block, you know. And it's just like my response to them is always the same. Hey, they go to the same tailor that you went to. They're wearing, you know, it's all the same clothes, so don't worry. It's all good. We just, you know, this church just went through and had um, a wonderful time at camp. Uh, most of you guys, maybe I don't know all of it, but, you know, if you were there, you know that it was good. And I was thinking this morning that during the, during the camp and during the services, there was a lot. Of, I mean, there was excitement. There was fellowship. There was things that was spoken over other people. There was things that, that uh, ministered. And it was like going to a bakery. It was like going to a sweet shop, wasn't it? It was like sun, uh, hot fudge Sunday every day. And we went there and we got the sweet things, didn't we? The fellowship and the kindness and the love and everything that we experienced. It was like eating sweets. Well, I'm sorry to tell you, but I'm here this morning and I'm going to feed you spinach. <laughs> so get up. Get ready, buckle up. The fear of the Lord. The fear of the Lord. When I look around and what's going on in this country, when I look around and see what's, what's, what's going on, what's being taught, what's being uh, said, uh, what's going on in politics, what's going on in, in our schools, what's going on around in our neighborhoods, We've lost the fear of the Lord. 
But it's not just those places. It's right in here. Some of us have lost that, that one of those first things that we learn when we become Christians. If we go, to, if we go ahead and go to uh, Proverbs chapter 1. I gave them a, a list, but... I don't know whether I'm going to get, get it up or not, but I'll go ahead and read it. Proverbs chapter 1, verse 7 says this. It says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. Now... The fear of the Lord. You know, a lot of people, when I, you know, when I talk about this, and they all say, well, what do you mean? Are we supposed to be afraid of God? No. That word, that, you know, that word that's got a different meaning, you know, that's, we're supposed to have a, a reverence beyond anything that we'd ever reverenced before. Amen? He's to be, he's to be lifted high above every other thing in our lives. He's supposed to be lifted high above our habits. He's supposed to be lifted high above our job. He's supposed to be lifted high above our spouses, huh? Above our mom, our dad, our grandma, our grandpa, our our little babies, everything. God, in the person of Jesus Christ, is to be lifted high above everything else. And when we give him that reverence, when we give him that awe, when we give him that due, that is fear of the Lord, that we we have an awesome he's just we're telling him he's just so awesome amen that's that correct fear of the Lord Proverbs 9 Proverbs 9 uh, 10 uh, kind of goes right along with that it says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and knowledge of the Holy One is understanding how do we do that what do you mean knowledge of the Holy One Huh? Right here. This is how we learn. This is how we, we know what God is saying to us. And once we understand that, and that is the central driver of our Christian life, that we fear God above all, then everything else kind of comes in line after that. You cannot go out, and we, not you, but I'll just say we, we cannot go out and do what God has called us to do if we, don't have, if we are not correct ourselves, amen? We cannot go out and, and, and witness for him and share for him and share the gospel and, and uh, see mighty works done. I'm telling you, uh, I actually am silly enough to believe that it says when you pray for somebody, they could be healed, it says, it says that, that, you know, we can do that. I believe that we've all got a calling on our life. We've all got a commission. Every single one of them. There is none exempt. And if you feel that you're exempt, then you have to ask yourself, why? What makes you so special? We all have something to do. We all have something to say. We all have someone that God has from the time and eternity. There's somebody that's coming into your life soon, maybe today, that you're going to speak to, that you're supposed to speak to. Proverbs 11.30 says this. It says, Proverbs 11.30 says, the fruit of righteousness is, is a tree of life, and he who wins souls is wise. Do you want to be wise in the, in the eyes of the Almighty? Do you want to have that, that standing with God, that right standing with God? Then we go out and we win souls. I mean, that's what it's all about anyway, isn't it? And yes, you know, we want people to come to church and we want them to feel comfortable and we want them to feel loved. That's absolutely true. But we want them to be saved. We want them to be uh, delivered from whatever it is that they're uh, caught up in. We want to see them set free. Just like that first song, you know, that was talking about the dry bones. 
There's dry bones everywhere. I forget, I think Julie said something this morning about, you know, she's looking around and she's seeing uh, skeletons already everywhere. Everybody's putting up skeletons. Isn't it sad to even think about something? Think about this, that um, Halloween is quickly becoming the most favorite holiday in the country, even over Christmas and Easter. Isn't that sad? That you have more people looking forward to Halloween and, of course, we know what that's all about. And, of course, you know, to kids, it's about going around getting candy. But there are people, and, and I know people personally, believe me, they look forward to Halloween like, like nothing else. And they celebrate darkness. They celebrate. And, 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 you know, they try to make fun of witches and goblins and ghouls and stuff. But believe me, witchcraft is real. Eh? You realize that. Witchcraft is real. I read something that really struck me really hard. Um, when we go about our lives day after day after day, and we don't press into God and get a fresh filling, oh, but Tim, I go to church once a week. Well, yeah, and I'm glad you're here. But do you just eat once a week? If you do, you're starving. We need to have God fill us and touch us and speak to us daily, don't we? We've got to know what he's doing. We've got to fill his Holy Spirit, uh, touch us and fill us and revive us daily. That's the only way we're going to be of any account to the kingdom of God is if we do that. Amen? I read this and, and, and it made me think of my ex-brother-in-law. I'm not going to say his name, so, you know, I'm not going to throw him under the bus. But um, <clears throat> I can remember when Sherry and I first got saved. By the way, we've been walking with the Lord for 41 years. 41 years. I got saved on April 11th. It was a Friday night at a prayer meeting uh, in 1983. I walked into that prayer meeting. Folks... I was a functioning alcoholic. I drank every day. I smoked bales of dope. I started to like the cocaine. I had stacks of pornography. I had a wandering eye. I was a thief. I was a liar. That's who I was. And if I didn't like you, I really didn't like you. And I had hate in my heart, which made me a murderer in God's eyes. But one week in 1983, he, he, he got a hold of me. And I ended up at a prayer meeting at, in a Lutheran ba a church basement. And I have no idea how in the world I got there. Sherry's mom and dad went to it, you know, and there was Baptists there, there was Pentecostals there, there was Charismatic Catholics there, there was a, a, a Pentecost, you name it, they were there, and there was, it was a, about 150 people, and I had been staying home all week because I thought there was something physically wrong with me. My heart was beating out of my chest. I said to Sherry, I can't go anymore, we can't go to the bar tonight, I got to dry out, I just got to dry out. I'm, I'm, going to, I'm fixing to die. At the end of the week, I was ready to go back in the bars again, but I didn't want to rush it, you know. So I said, why don't you call your mom and dad? Let's, let's go out and get something to eat with them, and then maybe I can get a glass of wine, just kind of ease back into it a little bit. So she calls her mom up, and her mom says, we would love to go with you, but we're going to the prayer meeting. Sherry covers the phone. You know, we're standing in the kitchen, and, she goes, they're going to the prayer meeting. <laughs> Sherry was just as bad as I was. <laughs> she was worse. <laughs> no, she wasn't. Uh, but she could drink me under the table. I'll just say that. So then her mother says, we would love to meet you for dessert, you know, maybe after the prayer meeting. And then she says to Sherry, she says, 
you know, you guys are welcome to come tonight if you want to. And she covered the phone and laughed. Sherry laughed. And I said, what'd they say? She's laughing. She goes, Mom said, you guys are welcome to come to the prayer meeting if you want to. And as God is my witness, I'm standing there with the most stupid look on my face. I went, okay. <laughs> Just like that. All right, let's go. So we drove to the prayer meeting, and I walked in there, and, you know, I came from, I'm not going to say what church, but I was raised in this church, and she was raised in this church, and it's not like this church. I'll just, it's quiet, you know, and they stand up, and they kneel down, they sit down, and they kneel down, and sit, you know, so that's all I'm going to say. So, you know, I wasn't used to that, and I walked in there, you know, and there was construction men, there was guys in suits, there was, there was people, there was all ages of people, and they were standing there, and the worship had already started, and there was people with their hands up, and I'll never forget, I walked in there and stood there and looked around at everybody, and I said to myself, whatever they got, I want. Whatever, whatever it is, whatever's in this building, I want that. That's what I want. And God saved me that night. I have no clue what was preached. I don't know. I just don't know. All I know was Jesus loved me. He wanted to save me. And I said, yes, I want it. i got to have it. So anyway, Sherry, she did not get saved that night. She, she's a tough nut. I mean, she, you know, she's a hard cookie. Let me tell you, she thought I lost my mind. And... Uh, I did. I did lose my mind. I did lose my mind. And I lost all my friends. I turned into, in one night, I turned into a Jesus freak. Did you, ever, did you ever meet a Jesus freak? I'm telling you. Maybe you were a Jesus freak. But are you now? Huh? Where did that go, you know? So, anyway, um, my, get back to my brother-in-law, my ex-brother-in-law. My ex-brother-in-law was raised in a Baptist church, and uh, he, you know, I, I was just so excited about Jesus, and we'd get together, and I would say something about what I heard in church, or uh, a worship song, or something that I read in the Bible, and he would look at me, and he'd say, don't lecture me on the Bible. I know more Bible than you do. You'll never know as much as I do. Just don't even talk to me about it. It's like, well, and he did. And a time or two, you know, he would just spout it out. He would just go ahead and, and let me know that he knew the word. Yeah, he did. He knew the word. He sure did. Had it memorized. But did you ever go into an orchard and see a tree that didn't have no fruit on it? There were no fruit. Dead branches everywhere. And a long story short, there was a divorce there that came, you know, and he ended up going with other, uh, other women, married other women, another divorce, and this and that and the other. And as much as we can keep track of where he's at, he's just a mess. But he knows the Word, knows lots of the Word. And when I read this that I'm getting ready to read you, I know that he's, he's drinking. Of course, he always, you know, he had some other stuff going on. There's two things I want to share with you that I, that I read. Complacency today equals captivity tomorrow. Once we allow ourselves to be complacent in our relationship with the Lord... And get used to everything. And it's all becomes old hat. Oh, I've been there. I've done that. I used to be excited about the Lord. Oh, I was at a Bible study. I went to a Bible study for a couple years. You know, I've heard it all. Yeah, I used to work. I used to go ahead and I used to go with some people and we'd do some street witnessing. But, you know, it just, we didn't get that many people, you know, and it just kind of died out. And An old preacher by the name of Thomas Watson says this about the Bible. It says, Bible knowledge without repentance will be but the torch to light the way to hell. 
Think about that a minute. Just knowing of the Word or reading the Word once in a while, that that's not going to get it done. We are living in the end, in the end times. Do you believe that? Yeah. Did you ever think you'd see some of the things that you're seeing? I didn't. I mean, I, I actually, I, I mean, and, it, and it's happening so fast, isn't it? Every single day it seems like we see and hear something else, something else, something else. Just look at Israel. Look at what's going on around the world. And the church, I'm just going to say that um, the church, not this church, the church, what's the church doing? The church worldwide is almost split right down the middle, isn't it? The second largest church in the world, the Church of England, is split right down the middle. The Methodist Church is split right down the middle. The Lutheran Church is going through that. There's things going on in the Catholic Church right now that would cause, you know, our, uh, our forefathers and saints before us to flip out. And the church has allowed the world to come in and change it and affect it and infect it. And all while everything's changing in the world and it's happening lightning fast and people's lives are being uh, changed to think the worldly way, the church is busy being split and ineffective. Because, maybe because we've become complacent. Maybe we've become a little bit static. Maybe we've become just a little bit lazy. Maybe we're not spending as much time in prayer. Maybe we're not spending as much time in the Word. Maybe we're not spending as much time in personal worship. You know the word worship? You know... Uh, we had, you know, we had a, we call, you know, what we saw, but the word worship, the Greek word for worship is proskios, which means to come towards, to kiss the face. You can do that, and you can do that by yourself, can't you? To have that worship time with the Lord, that you would, that you would have that intimacy, that you would come towards to kiss his face. That's worship. And he's he is wanting that. And that song that we, that we sang about the dry bones, there's dry bones everywhere. And when Julie said something about the skeletons, I was thinking to myself, gosh, Sherry and I went up to the Dark County Fair the other day, and they had this brand new big tractor, big Steiger, I think, tractor, probably $500,000 piece of machinery. And we're walking by, and I said, look at the size of that thing, will you? And we're just kind of just standing there looking at it. And then I look up in the cab, and what do you think sitting in the seat in that cab? Big old skeleton. You know, I think God gives us the ability to see things in the natural that it's actually speaking to us in the spiritual. Don't you? And when I see that... And when I see what's going on with Halloween, and when I see what's going on around the world, and then Julie says something about that, and you know, we already know the story about the dry bones, speaking to the, prophesying over the dry bones. I'm telling you, it's time for the church to start speaking to dry bones. It's time for the church to do what we need to be doing. It's time for the church to... Um, uh, to actually come into that correct and right relationship with Jesus Christ where he is the absolute everything, everything, above all, that we would be willing to be called a fool for Christ. You know, there's a lot of people, they don't want that moniker, do they? They do not want to be called a Jesus freak. They do not want to be called a Bible thumper. They do not want to be called, they don't want to be called that. And it, they're secret Christians. Quiet. Don't say anything. I don't want to be embarrassed. They might ask me, what about this scripture? I don't know. I don't, I don't know enough scripture. But you know your testimony, don't you? You know how you got saved? You know? You know, the scary thing to me is, is when I talk to Christians sometimes... I've actually asked a lot of Christians here lately, 
and ask people, tell me, um, tell me about your salvation experience. When did you get saved? When did you get saved? And some people can tell me just exactly like I told you this morning. Hey, I was here, and it was this time, and it was this month, and it was this year, and this is what happened. But you'd be surprised how many people, Christians, that, well, I ask that question, and they just tell me, I don't know. I was just, you know, I, my parents took me to church, and that, I've always gone to church, and that's what I know about it. I just know that, you know, Jesus is the Son of God, uh, and I go to church. I was, I was thinking about... I was thinking about going here, and I thought I was wrestling with myself. But I told you I'm going to give you some spinach. Sorry. I'm kind of that guy that thinks sometimes it's better to slap a hand than hold it. You know what I mean by that? The church is too busy holding hands, and it's all right, honey, it's okay, it'll be all right. And sometimes I think that we need to look people in the eye and say, get with it! Jesus is coming back. There's a heaven to gain and a hell to shun. Come on, let's get with it here. Choose this day who you will serve. It seems like I talked to so many of them and they've got one foot in the world and one fr- foot in the church and, they, and from day to day, depending on what's going on, it depends on where they're walking. And we need to be different. We need to be different. We need to be lovers of Christ. We need to be followers, followers of Jesus. Now, in my younger days, I probably would have went over there and grabbed that cross right there and hoisted it up here. I can't do that anymore, but you see that cross over in the corner over there. Maybe he can go over and just stand it up so you see it. Yeah, there it is. That man can, look at that. That cross right there. Do you have one of those? You know what I mean? Do you have one of those? Do you pick up your cross daily and follow the Lord? That means if you do that, that means there's going to be a little bit of pain in your life. If you do that, that means you might be embarrassed once in a while. If you do that, you might be challenged once in a while. Huh? If you do that, you're going to see results. If you do that, you're going to cause a smile on the Father's face. Because we're doing exactly what God has called us to do if we pick up that cross daily and follow him. We have to follow him. We have to be in love with Jesus. We have to become, we have to have the fear of the Lord in our lives above all, above everything. We have to fear God. We have to reverence God. He has to be everything. But the Bible tells tells us, but that's not that's not going to be for everybody. This is a very scary scripture to me. It always has been very scripture to, uh, very scary to me. It says in Matthew seven, starting at verse uh, verse twenty, it says, "Therefore, by their fruits you will know them." Just like I said about my ex brother in law. In verse 21, it says, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. But he who does the will of my Father in heaven. But he who does the will of my Father in heaven. What is the will of God for our lives? To go to church once a week? To live like the world the rest of the week? To spend just five minutes in prayer a day? To not pray for your neighbor, to not pray for the person that's next to you at work, to not witness, to not uh, do the things that Christ has called us to do, and to love him with all of our hearts. And he says this, he says, not 
everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name, and done many works in your name? Well, that, gosh, that almost sounds like this church, doesn't it? That sounds like the Pentecostal church maybe down the street. That sounds like maybe the, the Baptist church. Well, I don't know about prophesy, but you know. That sounds like a lot of churches, you know, that we have been to, that we have visited. They, they do those kind of things, don't they? And haven't we? And then Jesus says to them, and then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. Wow. They were doing all the church stuff, weren't they? They were doing all the right stuff. They were prophesying. They were casting out demons. They were doing all kind of mighty works. They were busy. They were busy. But they really didn't know him. He wasn't their all in all. There was something else on the throne of their heart. At, like, I, like I said, you know, this morning early, the Lord got me up between 4 and 4.30, and I started praying, God, that you would, that you would plow up the heart in every person's life that has come here this morning, God, that you would just allow this so that there would be a good seed be planted and would grow. And see, the, 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 the problem is, is for a lot of people is, yes, they've come to church. Yes, they maybe they've made a profession. Um, uh, they maybe read the word once in a while, but, you know, just like, what I've explained and the problem is they have not died what's the word say unless a seed dies it's got to die before it can grow doesn't it we've got to die to Christ in order for us to be used by Christ I, I read a I read um, a a a comment that a pastor down Tennessee said that just struck me so strong and he said before God can use you fully he must own you completely think about that that's a strong statement huh does Christ own us completely have you given him everything and I know some of us have I know some of us are on fire for Christ I'm a big YouTube watcher, and I watch YouTube all the time, and I love to, I love to uh, see these uh, street preachers and, and these guys that go out, you know, and they, they witness to a bunch of people, and it's amazing to me how many people, um, Living Waters Ministry does this, and he'll ask them, um, sometimes he'll say, well, are you a Christian? Yeah, I'm a Christian, you know, and he, and he talks to them a little bit, and he says, well, let me just ask you a question. He says, I'm going to die in three minutes. I'm going to die in three minutes. Tell me how I can go to heaven. Tell me how I can be saved. It's astounding how many people that say, quote, I'm a Christian, have no idea and didn't know what to say and don't know what to say. They don't. They don't know what to say. In the book of Revelation, chapter 3, <clears throat> he talks about, the Lord talks about being hot and cold and lukewarm. He says in verse three, uh, chapter 3, verse 15, he says, I know your works, that you are neither hot, cold nor hot. 
I could wish that you were cold or hot. So then, because you are lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will vomit you out of my mouth. Man. I don't want to be that way. Do you want to be that way? I do not want to be, I do not want to be cold for God. I don't want, I definitely don't want to be lukewarm for God. I want to burn white hot for God. Amen. Do you want to burn white hot for God? Is that something that is, I mean, as I'm speaking to, to you, is there something in your heart? Can you feel something? Are you questioning your own self? Are you looking at your own self and going, you know, I don't, I don't know whether I'm really there right now or not. Have I cooled off? Maybe you were once hot for God. Maybe you were all about it. Have you cooled off? Are you satisfied with the, with the exactly, the, you know, are you satisfied with the status quo? Are you satisfied with your life right now? Are you comfortable? The most dangerous thing for a Christian is for us to be comfortable. Think about that a minute. We get comfortable, then that complacency complacency moves in. So I'm going to ask you a question. Are you satisfied? Are you satisfied? Are you really satisfied where you're at with God? Or is there something inside of you that's going, more, Lord? I want more. I want more of you. I want more of your spirit. I want more of your holy fire. I want more. I want to be able to speak to my neighbors. I want to be able to prophesy. I want to be able to pray the prayer of faith and actually pray the prayer of faith for healing. I want to, I want to serve you like no other. I want to be counted as one that is, that is uh, marching out what you have commanded to go into all the world and preach the gospel. Preach the gospel. The word of God says they overcome them, the enemy, by the blood of Jesus and the word of their testimony. Have you shared your testimony lately? Maybe you need to get your testimony out, write it down, look at it again. Your testimony is your testimony. Your testimony is telling somebody, I used to be this way and now I'm this way. I used to be dead and now I'm alive. I used to be addicted and now I'm free. No one can knock you off of that. That's your testimony. So what I'm going to say to you right now is this. I'm going to afflict you a little bit here. I'm going to call for some participation here. Because I think it takes... It takes something, just like at the jail. I do not, when I, uh, uh, we had like t- between 25 and 30 men saved at the jail Thursday night. And God just is doing a marvelous work uh, at the jail. I mean, last week there was like 18 guys, and I mean, the Holy Spirit is just moving in the jail. But I do not do this. Now, guys, bow your head and raise your hand. If you want to receive Christ, I don't, I just don't, I just don't do that. I want them to get up in front of their peers and walk where I'm standing and come up and stand in front of them and make a public declaration, I want to get saved. I want Jesus in my life. I I don't want to go to hell. I want to go to heaven. I want to follow Christ, and that's what I do. And so today, as everybody's sitting here, I mean, I don't know, maybe everybody in this, in this entire room is saved. I hope that you are. But if there is somebody in here that you know that you know that you know, you, you know, you've been messing around with Christianity, you've been coming to church all the time, you know, it's all good, and you've kind of maybe lulled yourself into this false sense of security, and now all of a sudden you're hearing some things and it's starting to... If you don't know that you're saved, you're not absolutely, without a doubt, for sure that you're saved, today could be your day, amen? 
But to everybody else that's sitting here, and you know that you've given your heart to Christ, you know that you're saved, but maybe some of this stuff that I've said is kind of speaking to you. Maybe you've allowed yourself to kind of be complacent. Maybe, you know, you, I mean, you love the, the, th the camp that we had last week, and you were, you were uh, good, and you had fun, and it was like satisfying the sweet tooth. But now it's time to get busy. And I would just ask, is there anybody here that would be willing to come down and stand with me and say, God, forgive me of my complacency. God, forgive me for not being white hot for you. God, forgive me and ask the Holy Spirit to touch us and refill us and give us what we need to do what we have been called to do, and that is to share the gospel, to share the good news with our loved ones, to our friends, to be the kind of Christian that God has called us to be, that we're not asleep, that we're not satisfied for just sitting in one spot and just saying, praise the Lord. It's time to get busy. It's time to be different. It's time to be used by Christ. It's time to die to self so that he can, that, that spirit and everything will, can grow in you and you can become. Is there anybody that would be willing to come up here and say, God, I need more of you. I've got to have more of you. Come on up. Come on. Come on. Anybody? Is anybody willing to come up? and pray and pray and ask God I want more I need more I need more of you I can't stand it I need more of you God I need more of you God I need more of you God Jesus Jesus more of you God Father, you see who's here. Father God, you see that everyone that's standing here. God, I just pray right now. We come against, Lord, things in, in lives that, uh, that they want to get rid of. So, God, I just pray that chains fall off. Lord, whether it be, whether it be an addiction of some sort or just stubbornness or just anger or whatever it might be, God, that it would fall off. Father, if there was something in our hearts that is there instead of you, God, that that would be dealt with. Father, I pray over these people, this family, this church, that you would fill them, Lord, with the Holy Spirit, that you would fill them to overflowing. God, that your spirit would go deep. I, I pray right now, God, that the Holy Spirit of God would touch them in a place they've never, so deep that they've never been touched there before, God. That they would notice that their prayer life is different. That they've noticed that their worship time is different. That they would notice that they've got a sense of boldness that they've never had before. God, I speak boldness over every one of them right now. I speak, I speak strength. I speak boldness. I speak um, health and strength. I speak wisdom. God, I just pray right now that you would give everyone standing here, everyone in this church, the proper fear of the Lord. God, that you would touch. God, that you would heal. God, that you would fill them to overflowing. Fill them to overflowing. God, I ask that you strengthen marriages. God, I ask that you strengthen relationships. God, I ask that you would cause our family here to be soul winners.
we thank you, we praise you. You have not given up on us. You love us. You want more from us. God, help us die to ourselves so that we can live unto Christ. Help us die unto ourselves, God, that we can live unto Christ. And we thank you, we praise you, we praise you, we praise you. Thank him and praise him for what he's doing right now. Thank you, Lord. 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 Well, I hope I didn't step on your toes too hard. But don't we, don't we need to hear this once in a while? Huh? And as good as this church is, we can be better, can't we? I mean, I'd rate this church among the top anywhere around, but we can be better. We can be stronger. We can be more anointed. Huh? We can be more soul winners. We can see the sick healed in this place. Huh? We've been praying for revival. Revival's not going to come until we get our hearts right, until we die to self. We need to do that. If there's a bunch of stinking self in this place, revival will not come. We've got to die to self. We've got to die to self. And then God, He will move among us. And I promise you, we, are, we will see, we will see the things that the Bible has told us we can see. Amen? I don't know about you, but I want to see dead people come back to life. I want to see people raised out of wheelchairs. I want to see people healed. I want to see so many people saved. I want to see you guys dragging your friends in to see them saved. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you and give you peace. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Go out and do it. Thank you so much for watching this message. We pray that it encouraged you. We also want to say thank you to our faithful partners and givers here at FOP. It's because of your generosity that this vision has been made possible. If you would like to partner with us, you can visit on our website. Also make sure to like and subscribe and check out the other sermons. Now go out and have a blessed week.